Hi, this is Janos, and let's talk more about single-ended output transformers. And uh, this will be focused on a class A operation. How does it uh, show up for the transformer? How we can uh, visualize what class A operation feels for an output transformer and for the power supply? So. I'm going to go with, uh, with uh, comments that I received on, uh, on this subject and I will just continue from here and explore from here. So MFR58 uh, commented something really interesting about his experience with transformers and he says that he has a 3K primary toroid single-handed output transformers that have 40 Henry specified inductance and their 5K uh, primary model is only specified at 28 Henrys and uh, however these are toroids so they are not like EI core or not C core and um, and yes I do have a history of saying I don't like uh, toroid transformers but when I mentioned about toroids, I'm always mentioning them in the context of uh, power transformers. And, and in that context, I don't like them because uh, for toroid transformers, they have no, no gap. Or actually, it, it doesn't mean that they cannot have, it's just uh, that uh, the, the models that you find in amplifiers the those power transformers they they are not gapped to have uh, any kind of uh, saturation any kind of dc current allowed to flow through them which today in our modern world is uh, happening all over the place so it, it when you have a power transformer in your amplifier that uh, does not take into account of possibility of low levels of DC current running through them, you are going to run into a major problem. And, uh, and that problem is saturation. And uh, basically, whenever you have toroid transformers, especially if they're big transformers, uh, you even if there's just one volt DC or a half a volt DC, on your line you can already hear it humming because it just saturates that beast and even if it's a one kilowatt or one kilowatt kvac uh, core if you have it saturated by one or two volts dc then it will your amplifier that's fed by that iron will sound as if it has one or two watts of power supply not one kilowatt power supply because of that and that's why often when when uh, when i hear uh, uh, um, amplifiers with uh, toroids uh, at, at actual people's homes sometimes they they sound as if there's no power in them they're just sounding puny and, and that's why they sound puny and without any kind of slam to it that they got saturated. Now, it highly depends on where do you live. If you happen to live in an area where there's absolutely no DC on the power grid and uh, you don't, do not notice that uh, uh, there's a la lack or, or loss of power or impact or slam uh, the sound doesn't collapse then it's okay then toroids will work for you they will be fine but uh, maybe you will move to another home and then the whole thing will collapse I have experienced this many times that's why I'm sharing about it and that's why I just don't prefer to have any toroids myself because <laughs> even if they would work at my current home actually at my current home they don't work i do have actually like toroids one i do have on in my deck and uh, i have toroids in a 
uh, in a power conditioner which is like an isolation transformers and 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 i can hear those isolation transformers hum almost every single day not all times just sometimes it's quiet and then out of the blue i suddenly start boo hearing that transformer hum and i'm keeping them for one of the reasons is just that they are excellent indicators to tell me that my line ac now sucks really badly and uh, however it's just important to note that when you have toroids as power transformers then you can observe catastrophic collapse of dynamics and power when the power conditions are not optimal in your grid however when you have a toroid output transformers uh, i never heard of and my and i never looked into single and toroid output transformers myself this is the first time i ever hear that such a thing exists uh, uh, my 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 uh, suspicion for that is probably it's it's gapped for that specific milliamp of DC current through it. Otherwise, it wouldn't work at all as a single ionic transformer. Now, in this case, because it's gapped for the appropriate DC current, even though it's a toroid transformer, it will work, and you won't run into that sort of saturation issue that you see with. Uh, uh, Doroid's power transformers because these are gapped for the application so for that they they get my thumbs up to run them as 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 properly gapped output transformers so uh, coming back to it uh, they are very reasonably priced for us in the UK and and I think that's that's the reason why people use toroids because uh, they can be manufactured at a much cheaper price point than than laminated uh, iron the other issue is that inductance varies with frequency but the manufacturers don't often give the inductance at a particular frequency and i i yes i find this to be extremely frustrating because you can't really compare one iron the specification with another one because even if uh, you look at companies which specify the inductance at the frequency like Hashimoto does but when you look at their iron uh, each iron is specified at a different frequency so like uh, the, their smaller iron I specified at 50 Hertz and, and as you go bigger uh, it's specified at 30 Hertz or 20 Hertz and uh, you you're comparing apples to oranges so you can't really compare anything um, but but generally if if you see like specifications given at, at a, a certain frequency you will be able to extrapolate from there uh, and then see if that's going to be enough or not for the base response we are looking and uh, and so usually what I noticed if uh, if the company spec gives a 5k specification uh, per kilo ohm then that tends to give pretty good substantial low and extension for the applications and i still can't see how in class a the signal current can exceed the quiescent current um, so actually now i have to clear up a misconception here um, so there is that misconception that in class A there is a constant uh, current draw by the uh, power tube but this current draw is not constant the average of the current draw is constant which means that we have this quiescent current that's drawn by the tube at all times and when there is an input signal coming then the current will either increase at one half of the cycle and then decrease at the other half of the cycle so if we have the sine wave uh, fluctuating up and down there here's the quiescent current and the current will rise and the current will fall current will rise current will fall and this rise and fall must happen because that is the signal 
that is the output of the tube if it would be constant then the tube would have no output whatsoever so so this has to rise and fall to have any kind of uh, sound and ener I mean energy coming out from the output of the tube that will be transfer translated into sound by the loudspeaker however this is class A because when in class A the, the rise up and the fall down is roughly equal so when you have a full sine wave happening a full duty cycle happening it will average out to an average level and uh, when it is in deep class A then it will average out ex almost exactly a tiny bit it will be different but it will be really 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 close to the quiescent current and as you are pushing the tube if it's not in deep class A anymore then you will see that the average starts rising a little bit and, uh, and when you take it out from class A you create it out to class B then you will see like massive increases for every half of the duty cycle and you will see shut off for the second half of the cycle and, um, and that's why for class B you want to have a push-pull amplifier because you are just amplifying one half of your sine waves and you would need the other pair of the push-pull pair to amplify the other half because then one tube is shutting down for one half of the duty cycle because there is not enough headroom from their quiescent current to to the zero what does this mean uh, let's have a, uh, let's look at an example for that so that uh, we can see what i am talking about so let's just scroll to the top and we are looking at the at a data sheet for a vacuum tube and i'm looking at the 2a3 vacuum tube which is a very classic uh, um, triode it's a direct heated triode and it's basically the grandmother of uh, single ended tube amplifiers and the 2a3 was that vacuum tube which was the most popular in the tube radio early tube radio era and um, when the direct heated triodes were king and uh, in that era this was the tube that was just uh, the thing to go for and it was manufactured for many 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 decades and dozens of companies manufactured it dozens of uh, variations so if you want to play around there's a whole bucket load of them sadly by now all of them all of the new old stock or everything that was manufactured back in the 30s and then uh, more more modern productions they became so scarce that the prices are really driven up and what we see here the tung Sol catalog the tung Sol 2a3 was one of the best 2a3 variants and uh, and now it, these, these would probably s are selling at some really ridiculous prices i think something like maybe three four hundred dollars a piece or even more expensive but anyway i'm just showing it to show uh, what we are looking at and how these how a triode works because many of these 2a3s they were designed for class a operation so let's just scroll down uh, there are some basic parameters here i'm not going to go over that it would be a subject for another video but i let us look uh, here what are we looking at yes this is what we want to look at so you see here the plate volts and the plate current so and then these lines here each line is uh, drawn for a specific uh, bias setting so for example let's see so there is this line here and 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 all of these measurements were measured when the bias voltage was negative 
40 volts and then this curve is plotted when we go from this like 178 volts and then it's like 5 milliamps of current and as we write increase the plate voltage the voltage on the anode then the quiescent current goes higher and higher and and let's find the spot which would be like a nice class a spot so like 220 240 volts and this is like uh, 65 milliamps so right here where i'm pointing with the green arrow 240 volts on the plate 65 milliamps and negative 40 volts on the grid this would be a deep class a operation and what happens here is now that there's 65 milliamps of quiescent current being drawn now if we are if you have a signal that has like plus and minus one volts on the grid then you see it's like going up one volt going down one volt it will be really really close to that 65 and uh, and when you see what you can observe that it around this part like here these lines are parallel right and and when you see that the lines are parallel it also means that when you are changing a few volts up and down the relationship will be of, of the change going down and change going up in current will be really really close to the original relationship so basically plus one volt the current at plus one volt and the current at minus one volt will be very very uh, closely the same magnitude in plus and minus so basically let's just make some sense out of it uh, that what happens I, I cannot tell more about this because the this plot these curves don't tell us enough information to get those readings the resolution of this is not enough to let me illustrate this point but they are enough to illustrate the exact opposite point so what happens when the signal is not just small like plus minus one volt but plus minus 10 volt on the grid so what happens here is now we are jumping up from the minus 40 line to the minus 30 line and here that is when we read it out it's like 135 milliamps so that's a really drastic increase from the 65 milliamps right plus 70 milliamps increase so that's like one half of the duty cycle of, of the signal that's coming now what happens when we go to the other half of that sine wave it goes to the negative 50 right what happens at negative 50 at 240 volts on the plate then we drop to 20 20 milliamps so now that is not 70 milliamps less than the 65s because if we go plus 70 we also need to go minus 70 so that it equals out at flat 65 where we started right but now you can see what is the problem here is that to have like plus 70 and minus 70 we need to have at least 70 milliamps quiescent current but we had only 65 <laughs> so uh, and it, this results that when we go up we can go up plus 70 but when we went down we could drop only 65 minus 50 which is uh what was that 55 or what was that I, I cannot think so that's that's the bad thing that when i'm trying to show something like that my my capacity to multiply even basic numbers is not there because i'm thinking about what i want to speak where i want to take this logically however when uh, let me just make this easy calculation so we have 20 milliamps minimum 135 milliamps maximum the distance between them is 115 milliamps right and uh, and what what would be the average of this thing it's like that would be like 20 plus 135 155 so 
so it would be like 78 milliamp is the average so basically the, the the quiescent current is 65 milliamps but when we push the input signal plus 10 minus 10 then we get the the average current draw increases to 77 milliamp from 65 so we see that this is not deep class a anymore we are pushing it beyond deep class a so that the, the average current demand on the trans on the power supply for a single duty cycle has risen from 60 to or 65 to 78 but the, the the change is really really close so technically we can still consider it uh, uh, class a but it's not a deep class c anymore where the difference between quiescent and and when we have the signal running is maybe like a few microamps or a few milliamps of changes which is like not something significant that would tax the power supply even this change like a 20 percent change it does not tax a power supply so we are still close we are in safe class a territory it's nothing like what we see in a in a in a class b operation when we have like a 20 milliamp quiescent current and then it jumps up to 200 or 300 milliamps then we have like a 10 times increase so it is like a thousand person difference versus a 20 person difference and uh, uh, and also this is why when you have a vacuum tube and uh, you cannot just drop the quiescent current to uh, super low because you are limiting the ability uh, that you can operate that tube in class A because the lower you are in the milliamp scale the lower reserves you have for one half of the duty cycle so that's why there's no free lunch no easy solution and why just having less quiescent current gives you more headroom for the output transformer but if you drop your quiescent current you also drop your ability to stay in class a so that's why the proper solution is not to drop the milliamps drastically for your power tube but to get a bigger output transformer however when we look at our comments uh, somewhere there frank has uh, commented really really excellent comments in these in these threads below and then he was warning and he gave really excellent warning that just making a, a bigger output transformer is not all the solution it will be a solution only to have bigger headroom to avoid transformer compression transformer clipping however when you go for a physically larger unit you also run into the problems that a bigger unit creates like bigger capacitances between the windings and and other problems and losses core iron related losses so how does that work out in real life is that for the same amplifier if you can make the smaller you make your transformer and let's say you just ask a single transformer manufacturing company and have them wind a smaller unit for you and a bigger one and I'm doing that because when you take like different brands different uh, transformer making philosophies they can widely differ and and probably what will be the biggest difference between them is not the size of the transformer but the knowledge of the person who made the iron but if the same person is making it then making it more more compact versus bigger one how it will sound is that the, the smaller one will have better resolution better detail level better clarity but it won't have uh, as relaxed sound it will sound like like more more um, high strung and when you have a bigger iron it will sound more relaxed more powerful like like your amp is not stressed out but it won't sound as detailed so so something and that's because of the bigger 
uh, higher capacitances, higher inductances will just uh, remove uh, some finer parts of the signal and, and it won't have as much detail level to it but it will have the capacity to have a big lung so smaller iron smaller lung but more articulation bigger iron bigger lung but not as articulated and the art is to find the uh, balance for yourself that works the best with your loudspeaker and 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 what you want to hear what is your priority because for example for me for most of my decades of being an audiophile just getting more details more intricacies the tiny things that was my big priority for me and now I'm in that phase of my life that just having a more relaxed presentation is of higher priority right now to me than just getting the utmost details out of the presentation so that's why it's just go for what you want for yourself what are your desires what are your needs and uh, and i'm giving you the ideas and the tools that you can choose to achieve those results and thank you frank thank you team for for your fantastic amazing comments and I hope these videos on transformers are helpful. <laughs> Bye team. Bye-bye.